Hello, this is Daniel, and I hope that you have been doing well. Today, I would like to talk about a recent experiment of mine. What I created here is basically a tool that helps you explore various, various proportions and silhouettes for characters. So I was practicing character modeling these days when I realized that one of my weaknesses was proportions. It is possible to make a character look alright, but admittedly, when looking at it, at the piece for so many hours, sometimes the eye just gets used to what it is. I would sometimes compare the proportions of my finished character to a reference or a similar piece, and you know, more, more often these would show differences. So I didn't know if there are many solutions that look good, or if I simply could have done better. One more thing that went through my head is that there are these widely known proportion rules such as, you know, the head is supposed to be a seventh of the body height for adults. But is that an absolute rule that applies to all styles or is that only for the realistic human body? This is why I decided to study various body types and styles to find my answer. I wanted to be able to rapidly try various combinations and compare them. What I came up with is a simplified rig and I want to give you a demonstration now. I first identified the major points of the silhouette that matter. The points you see here are the ones that I chose. A circle represents the head as it allows me to visualize its shape in both height and width. There are also points for the shoulder, the waist, the hip, and finally arms and legs have each uh, joint in the middle and an ending point. This alone would have already helped greatly in exploring these different variants, but my next goal was to reduce the, the control to make it very easy to use. What you can now do is you can grab the hip and as you can see the waist and the knees automatically adjust. You can also adjust the height of the shoulders and you can see that the head moves uh, with it and that the elbows and the waist again adjust. Same thing for the width uh, of the shoulders. Finally, um, when you just position the head and the hands and the feet, probably you've already captured um, you know, 80, 90% of what really defines a character. This is what I consider the primary proportions. Now, the next step then is to adjust the secondary aspects, you know, the, the waist, the knee, the elbows, and with that secondary, you know, primary to secondary uh, breakdown, you go step by step from major changes to less impactful modifications. Admittedly, this rig is not perfect yet. I initially wanted to combine the height and width of the shoulders in one control, just as I did it for the hip, but I ran into some issues with the alignment of the head, so, well, it's a work in progress. Still, I'm happy with the results so far and uh, look forward to explore the differences. You can see here that I already tried to trace a few body types. I used keyframes here to save various versions. My initial realization was that the typical proportion rules that I talked about before only apply to the realistic human body after all, and they also once again vary a lot from person to person. However, there is some rules that allow for better expression. A very heavy person, for example, tends to have proportionally shorter legs compared to a very light and thin person. This emphasizes the weight of the body. And um, another very simple example that you probably have heard of already, uh, the width of the shoulders and the hip strongly contribute to whether the character looks feminine or masculine. I still have more to explore the but what steps are next? Although I do not want to get hung up too much with this side project, I would love to see this sort of proportion explorer with more details. I made some sketches of what I would have normally done to construct the body, and as you can see, there are now smoother lines uh, that give away more than you know the boxes that, that you saw before. I already defined primary and secondary level of controls as we looked at just before. But this may as well be expanded to a third level, at which point the silhouette can be more detailed. I'm thinking about points such as the arcs that typically define the shape of the leg and 
more detail for the waist as well. I tried to sketch them all here, but I'm not happy just yet. It seems a bit too mechanic still and requires imagination to see uh, what the character would be in the end. The last step in this project, assuming that this uh, next task was successful, would be to apply this to a three-dimensional blockout rig. If this is achieved, the resulting mesh could be easily used as a very good starting point for a sculpt, and it's always important to start with something simplified because, uh, you know, if you did, did the first, I think the first 10 minutes of your sculpt define your project the most. So um, here is one more question then that I wanted to talk about before ending this video. Although this tool would make character design easy and it, it may seem as if it is a crutch to make up for a weakness in my sculpting skills. But quite honestly, from what I have learned in recent years, the result is what counts much more than how you got there. If you really want to work uh, in this industry, doing everything through pure skill is admirable, but if everyone around you is still better or quicker, you will have a hard time. But now for a more positive perspective, even if it was a crutch or something like that, using it, you may still be able to learn a lot. People with crutches eventually walk without them after all, as well as how, you know, children first try tricycles to eventually then switch to two wheels or even one wheel. Yeah, therefore rejecting such tools would be as if you wanted to walk before you can crawl. In such, I personally try not to feel too bad about using this, even as a major um, element in my workflow. This brings this video to an end then. I hope that you have learned something in this video and that you have been inspired. I also want to invite you to please help me develop this project. I know that uh, there are customizable rigs out there for animators in particular, but I haven't been too satisfied with them so far. If anyone can come up with a more advanced version of this, please get in touch. I would be really interested to talk more. Before I end, uh, one last comment. Uh, it's a bit of a different topic, but if you remember my last video where I introduced the Visual Library application, I just wanted to let you know of some very good news. It is still being worked on for almost a year now, and yeah, I just wanted to let everyone know that we are making steady progress. So. Stay tuned for those updates and more. Other than that, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching until the end and I hope to see you next time.